Thank you, Irina, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this session, which will be a demonstration of the OAPEN OA Books Toolkit. Uh, my name is Nils Stern. I'm director of the OAPEN Foundation, and uh, we are hosting the, the toolkit. I'd also like to thank uh, the organizers of the Open Science Fair for giving me this opportunity to talk to you today. Before uh, beginning the demonstration, I'll just uh, give you a few words on the background of the toolkit. Uh, next week, it will actually be one year since it was launched. And uh, it was launched to help uh, authors, libraries, uh, research support staff to better understand open access book publishing and to build trust around uh, OA books. At the day of launch, it was um, uh, comprising more than around 30 articles written by experts in the field. It is a stakeholder agnostic uh, global initiative uh, with an editorial advisory board, um, which has representatives from uh, researchers, uh, publishers, funders, libraries, uh, research support staff and other key uh, stakeholders. The toolkit was developed in cl uh, close collaboration with Springer Nature and the University of Glasgow with the support of uh, the universities of Oxford and Utrecht. And it is uh, operated by uh, OAPEN. And OAPEN, for those of you who don't know uh, OAPEN, OAPEN is um, a hosting platform for open access books. It was developed uh, in 2010, uh, and it, today it hosts more than 17,000 open access peer-reviewed books from, from more than 300 uh, publishers in the world. We also operate the directory of open access books together with Open Edition. So to start off, I will share my screen and show you the toolkit. And um, the presentation I'm giving is uh, just about 20 minutes, and then there will be time for questions uh, afterwards. So um, to begin with, we are here at the homepage, and you can see the URL is uh, oabooks-toolkit.org. At the homepage, top menu bar here, there are three uh, menus about OA, the OA books landscape, and about the toolkit. And underneath, there is uh, an article about what is open access, about OA myth busting, and there are a few articles about the OA books landscape, and also about the toolkit itself. For instance, who is responsible for this toolkit, which is a list of all the members of the uh, editorial advisory board. Here below in the yellow bar, you can uh, see uh, again the purpose of the toolkit, which is to help book authors better understand OA book publishing and to increase trust in open access books. For today, I will um, show you three different pathways to navigate the toolkit. Uh, first of all, I will show you how to uh, use the FAQ, then the life cycle, the research life cycle. And then finally, I will also use the um, glossary, which is up here. So those three navigational routes I will uh, demonstrate. And first, the FAQ, which you find here and also here. And uh, clicking the FAQ uh, leads me to this set of questions that you may have if you're, especially if you're new to OA book publishing, but also you may want to um, see if there are any issues that or concerns that you can find answers to. And the, the FAQ has been subdivided into a few uh, sections, as you can see. And um, to begin with, I could, um, for instance, uh, start with 
looking at uh, the subsection funding and uh, there's a question do i need to pay a fee to publish my book open access when i go there i get a short answer to this question which is indeed that publishers use a variety of different business models to, to support open access book publishing some of these models require a fee to be paid by the author's funder or institutions institution but many do not so that's the short answer and if you want to uh, learn more you can go to this article which deals specifically with different types of business models for uh, OA book publishing. And you can see that there are different models. Uh, so there is the BPC based um, model and there is um, other models as well, like the freemium model. And you can see some examples of those publishers who make use of that model. There's also institutional subsidy models, library membership, and crowdfunded models. Here below, there are uh, references to uh, further reading as well. And in fact, this is the way all the articles in the toolkit are structured. So going back to the FAQ, um, I might want to know more about um, quality and prestige related to OA books. So for instance, this question, does open access lead to a loss of quality and prestige? And again, a fairly short answer to this question is that it does not uh, lack, uh, there's not a lack of quality um, because most publishers would use the same standards and procedures for both open access and non-open access titles. And if you want to know more, there's this article about common myths about open access. And as you may know, um, lots of myths uh, related to open access in, in general are out there. And also this also is true for books. And so we have tried with this article to counter some of those myths. And as you can see here, there are quite a few. And again, at the bottom, there are references to, to further reading So that was the frequently asked question. Now, uh, moving on to the second uh, navigational pathway, you can see that we have created something we call the life cycle, the research life cycle. And we have subdivided it into eight phases. So planning and funding, conducting research, considering publishing options, the writing and submission of manuscript, the peer review, book contract and license, book is published and research is reused. So these are the stages of, of any research uh, uh, process. Uh, and when you are uh, about to publish a book, you may have um, specific questions related to uh, specific considerations related to that stage of your uh, research process. So for instance, you could um, be uh, about to submit your manuscript and you would like to know what, kind, what types of publishers and publishing services exist. Going to this article, you will get uh, an overview of that and you can see that uh, there are indeed different types of publishing uh, uh, publishers engaged in OA book publishing. For instance, commercial publishers with some examples here, university presses, uh, new university presses, and academic led and library publishing. Short descriptions uh, available and examples of uh, the type of publishers uh, within each category. Also for the services, you'll see that the services that you could expect uh, from any academic publisher, you should also expect from an open access uh, book publishing uh, process. So that includes peer review, editorial services, uh, marketing, distribution, archiving, and so on. And again, there's further reading down here. Going back to the life cycle, um, 
I might also um, wonder about the peer review in, in, in particular, um, what kind of quality control is uh, related or attributed to, to open access books. So there's an article on peer review and quality control and a few uh, suggestions to what you could do to avoid uh, predatory publishing, for instance. So for instance, you could go to Think Check Submit website where there is a checklist for books. You could also look up uh, the publisher in the directory of open access books. As I mentioned, we, we also uh, operate that service and it's currently um, comprising more than 44,000 um, book entries from over 500 publishers. And there is a, an application process uh, to become part of the DOAB, which is about the peer review and the open licensing. So uh, you could think of DOAB a bit similar to DOAJ for, for journals. There's also the Committee on Publication Ethics, uh, which uh, provides good and clear guidelines for peer review practices. And again, uh, quite a few articles to uh, referenced here in uh, in the bottom of the page. So going back to the homepage, um, I would like to present to you the, the third way in which you can navigate the toolkit, which is using the glossary. So you may be familiar with OA books, or you may be new to the area. And of course, there are terms and concepts that uh, um, may not be familiar to you, and therefore you would like to have some more uh, information. It could also be concepts that are, um, uh, or how general concepts are specifically applied to OA books, like, uh, for instance, uh, impact. So if you go to this page, you'll see that there's a short uh, explanation of uh, the, the concept of impact in relation um, to books. For instance, if you go further to this article on metrics, you can see that there are uh, indeed uh, specific specificities for books uh, when it comes to metrics. And also some um, um, as a reference here, for instance, to uh, Springer Nature's study on uh, how uh, open access to books helps uh, increasing the number of downloads. In this study, it was increased by seven, seven times and 50% higher citation rate. Again, you can read more about metrics as well. Let's go back to the glossary and uh, one may wonder about uh, the different flavors of open access. So for instance, you can go to this uh, term, green open access. Uh, how should that be understood? Uh, well, there's a short explanation here of uh, the self-archiving of the manuscript, but also you may wonder about the different um, models for open access books, and you can see uh, those listed here, gold, green, diamond, hybrid, bronze, black, etc. Uh, perhaps one final um, uh, term we could look at would be uh, licensing. That's all, always quite um, interesting, of course, to look into the kind of licenses. And uh, again, you can see that there are indeed the Creative Commons suite of licenses, but also all rights reserved. And um, you can have more information about those. Also how to choose a license. In this section, uh, you can see more about the Creative Commons licenses and things to consider when you uh, uh, want to uh, publish your work. So, that was using the glossary. So now I have showed you uh, three different ways of navigating the toolkit with some examples of uh, what it looks like, the kind of articles you can find in there. And as I said, there are more than 30 articles 
in the toolkit uh, that uh, can provide you with more information. But of course, we know that there could be uh, more topics um, that should be in the toolkit. And that's why we continuously uh, discuss in the editorial advisory board what kind of new articles that could be uh, uh, added to the toolkit. But we'd also be very interested to hear from you uh, what topics that you would like to see described in the toolkit. If there are things that you are looking for, but you don't find, that would be very helpful for us to know. And in fact, there is under this uh, menu bar, you can see here, help and feedback. And if you go down, there is uh, a form you can use to give feedback. It could be on on the, the, the way the toolkit works, of course, but it could also be uh, ideas for um, new articles. And we would very much uh, welcome that. It would be really helpful. You could also just send an email uh, to us and, and then we will look into that too, of course. Um, we have seen um, great uptake from uh, the community uh, and we have um, actually seen more than 30,000 unique uh, visits to the toolkit from over 160 countries. And uh, of course, we hope that it will be an, a helpful tool for, for you uh, as an author or if you're supporting researchers in any way, um, you can use the toolkit to embed it into your own um, um, uh, services uh, in any way. And, and uh, we know that this is definitely also um, uh, how it's being used in many places. So feel free to use it, uh, use it as much as you like, and uh, be very welcome to give us any feedback and um, suggestions for, for new articles. With that, I'd um, like to thank for your attention and uh, welcome any questions. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Niels. That was excellent um, and very handy indeed. Uh, colleagues, sir, please, if you have any questions, sir, and I'll, well, I think there is a question in the chat. Um, yes, I see there's a question. Uh, if I know whether it's used by publishers, and uh, I think it is. Um, um, as I mentioned, uh, this was um, initiated through a number of, well, I didn't mention that, but it was, the, the toolkit was initiated as a, through a number of workshops between um, a few publishers, uh, some libraries, some uh, research support staff teams at, uh, at different universities, and Spring and Nature was uh, part of this initiating group, and I think, um, it, it definitely also is um, a tool that publishers can use when they um, are uh, um, dealing with authors who may be uh, skeptical or have questions. And then it's really helpful to have this, uh, all this information um, in, a, in, a, in, a single, uh, in a single place to be used. So I, I do get also feedback from uh, publishers who, who are uh, quite happy about uh, the toolkit. Thanks a lot. Um, my questions are around uh, reuse and um, using the toolkit in uh, training activities. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll start with a license question because I see at the bottom uh, a copyright sign and perhaps you could clarify about that. Uh, yeah. I can. Thanks for, for that question, because this has been something we have been looking into and, and trying to sort out, uh, because there are, um, uh, there are no direct credits to authors in the toolkit. You'll see it's, it's all been written by uh, either members of the editorial advisory board or um, others, but there was a decision made not to credit directly credit authors. But there are a few sources that have been used which are not opened, uh, openly licensed. But we have now filtered the, those articles. Uh, so there are five articles in the toolkit, 
which is not uh, which will not be um, uh, which we can't share under a Creative Commons license. But all the other articles will be shared under a Creative Commons license, and that will be uh, written uh, for each article so that it's clear uh, which articles you can just take and uh, translate or use in any way you would like. Thanks a lot. That's very helpful. Um... Oh, that's the question I see now <laughs> about translation. So yes, definitely. Uh, actually, we did consider and we did have some discussions uh, with uh, colleagues in other countries about this. And um, it's a big job to maintain translations, uh, exact translations in one website. But we do encourage, uh, we do really encourage uh, um, colleagues from other parts of the world to, to do translations if they think that is uh, helpful. And it could also be just uh, one on, uh, you know, two articles or part of an article. But again, uh, with the license um, um, clearly stated for each article, you'll see uh, those articles that you can indeed translate. Thanks a lot. Um... And I was also wondering about um, this uh, training material part. Have you ever thought about uh, letting people maybe download the page as, uh, as a PDF and use as a handout, for example, during the training, uh, or encouraging other, other types of reuse uh, in that way, like facilitating uh, instead of copying, pasting, or creating screenshots? Uh, yeah i don't know maybe it's too much to ask because otherwise tool, the tool is excellent and uh, yeah no really but useful. I, we, we have definitely uh considered that and i think um uh, this is part of our development plan for the toolkit to actually make a, a pdf copy you may say like a, a um a booklet you could make out of the toolkit um there is um and there are other things we'd also like to make, uh, like a free text uh, search function. Um, the thing is that we, we need some funding for uh, further technical development, and uh, we are looking for this. And uh, anyone can, can um, uh, support us uh, through, there's also a support uh, option through, through the toolkit. So, so we're trying to, to raise some funds to, to develop uh, further the toolkit and and the PDF uh, booklet would be one of those. Thanks a lot. Um, there is another question in the chat. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So the, the topics that are most interesting to users, definitely funding. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, that's, um, what we've that the feedback we have presented the toolkit at many conferences and and the questions we most get uh, are related to funding but it's also the feedback from our colleagues at the research support staff teams um, next to funding is uh, quality assurance so the peer review and the licensing those are the three most um, commonly used So the, the funding of the toolkit so far um, was um, a collaborative uh, approach. So uh, of course, all the, uh, uh, the writing of, of the articles was uh, made uh, kind of more from, from these experts. Uh, OAPEN has invested in, in the toolkit in the development of, of the website and uh, Spring and Nature was also uh, 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 helping with the initial funding but it's now in the hands of uh, OAPEN to maintain it, to operate it uh, entirely. And then it's in the hands of the uh, editorial advisory board to um, develop the content. Uh, but as I said, again, it's, it's really important that, that we also get some inspiration and some input uh, for new articles from, from, uh, from the community at large. So we still very much welcome that. Thanks a lot. And speaking about the funding section, uh, apologies, I should have known that. Uh, do you have specifics about, for example, open access books in uh, ERC requirements, or open access books in Horizon Europe requirements? Or... 
Yes, so actually there is um, under the funding section, uh, we link to a, um, a dynamic file, which is um, it's a Google Sheet. And uh, in that Google Sheet, we have listed uh, a number of funders, um, institutional policies and uh, research funder policies, including, for instance, the European Commission and, and the European Research Council, but also national funders and, and others. And uh, this is something we uh, envision that we will uh, develop further. So again, if you have uh, knowledge about um, a funder or an institutional policy not being in there, please uh, send it to us. Should I show it? Yeah, I can, maybe, maybe. I can just, maybe, very, maybe. I think mm -hmm. I can find it uh, briefly. Let's see if I go to the keywords. Mm, funding. Uh, yeah, so there's a list of funding sources for open access books. And this is, um, so this is spreadsheet and we can add information to this spreadsheet. So you can you can go through the, the links here and then you can uh, see the different kinds of uh, policy and require requirements and so on. But it's definitely not a complete list, uh, but we hope to to gather more uh, information here um, and to, so you can get this uh, overview. Thanks a lot. Um, tomorrow we'll have a workshop on uh, creating training materials on Horizon Europe and uh, ERC specifications uh, of uh, implementation of Horizon Euro Europe requirements. So maybe that's that's another area we could collaborate on uh, providing clear messages to researchers what exactly is required related to books. Uh, yeah. That would be great. We we are doing actually currently we are undertaking a project with uh, ERC for mm -hmm. also depositing their books open access into the OAPEN library, and I think the toolkit is could be part of that. Uh, let's say um, um, uh, could be helpful to those authors as well. Mm, yeah, absolutely. It's really a one stop shop for, for all <laughs> book related questions. Um, Colleagues, do you have any um, any questions? And yeah, I agree. It's a very clear presentation and excellent tool. Thanks a lot. Um, well, thank you for the questions and and thank you for for listening in. <laughs>